I'm Dr. Candy, and this week I wanted to talk about probiotics. So I recently had to get over COVID for a second time. That's a story for another day. And I consulted someone for help with some of the lingering skin conditions I was getting that was just bugging me out. And one of the things that she recommended was probiotics. So I'm game for anything, but not before I do my research. So I started and I found the whole thing really fascinating, albeit a bit of a rabbit hole as science is. Now, I've definitely noticed a big difference, but I can't go so far as to say that it's the probiotics alone, but I've definitely learned a lot and I think it's really, really interesting stuff. So many of you would have heard the term probiotics banding around, but in order to answer the question what it is, I think you need to have a basic understanding of what's happening inside of you. So starting with a fun fact, it's estimated that each individual has somewhere between 40 and 300 trillion bacteria living inside of us most of it resides in our gut. Now, all of that sounds really scary, like why do I have so much bacteria inside of me? But not all of this is bad bacteria. In fact, most of it is good bacteria. And not only is it harmless, but it's also necessary for a correct balance. Now, good bacteria helps our body digest food, absorb nutrients and produce vitamins such as vitamin K, folic acid and the B complexes. It also turns fibers into short chain fats, which feed our gut wall and help with metabolic functions. It also plays a role in building our immune system and just strengthening our gut wall and preventing any like nasty substances or foreign bodies from entering and causing the problems. Now the study of gut flora is something that is growing year on year and it's still relatively difficult to understand for scientists let alone individuals but the bottom line is that the, a great balance between gut flora is linked to lots of health benefits. We know that an unbalanced gut flora can lead to things like type 2 diabetes, obesity, metabolic syndrome, heart disease, colorectal cancer, Alzheimer's and depression too because there's a link between the gut and the brain. Probiotics themselves, therefore, are a type of live bacteria, in some cases yeast too, which can be consumed as supplements or foods, and they're said to be really good for us because they compete for space and food against bad bacteria, and so prevent the bad bacteria from sticking around and ensure that that balance is tipped in favour of the good bacteria. Okay, so looking back at, at the video I did on lifestyle factors, it's interesting that many of those things can negatively impact your gut flora. Smoking, terrible. High stress levels, really bad for you. Consuming alcohol in excess. Low fiber diet, high sugary foods for the bacteria to feed off of. Antibiotics, because anti literally means against and biotics life. And so antibiotics don't discriminate between good bacteria and bad bacteria. And so it's actually quite you know, a problem when you have too much antibiotics in your gut. And following on from my last point, the benefits include antibiotic associated diarrhea. So if you have that or you're experiencing traveler's diarrhea, um, symptoms of IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, like bloating, cramping, tummy pain, passing poo too often, and a bacteria called H. pylori 2. Some small studies have shown that it actually improves cholesterol and diabetics and improves the outcome from common viruses and also skin conditions like eczema. You also, you heard it here first, researchers think that probiotics help speed up the recovery from coronavirus, as gut health is really key to strengthening the immune system, as I mentioned earlier. Some even use it for vaginal infections like bacterial vaginosis. Now, <laughs> I've certainly seen patients who in my sexual health um, rotations have inserted it into the vagina in hopes of balancing the pH, but I think oral supplements will suffice. Caution, I think, should be taken, especially in those who are immunocompromised. And so talking to a nutritionist would be your best bet. Um, in most people, there aren't many downsides. I just be careful because it's, I guess it's seen, it's quite a fairly unregulated market. So it's seen more as a food than a medicine. Um, so it's just generally best to stick to, you know, your trusted reputable brands. So as I mentioned, there's lots of different types, but they all have different benefits. But the most common ones are lactobacillus, which is best for antibiotics, associated diarrhea, traveler's diarrhea, and some say that it actually reduces your length of hospital stay. And it's also good for those who have lactose intolerance, so difficulty digesting uh, lactose sugar in milk. The other is bifidobacterium, which helps reduce your symptoms of the irritable bowel syndrome, as I mentioned earlier. 
and um, another common one is the yeast Saccharomyces boulardii and that helps fight uh, diarrhea and other digestive problems. You can get probiotics from supplements as well as from foods prepared by bacterial fermentation. So examples include yogurts, so Yakult, VSL or Yeo Valley, which is what I use in myself and my kids, and other foods like kefir, sauerkraut, tempeh, kimchi, miso, buttermilk, some cheeses, fermented drinks like uh, kombucha, sourdough bread too. Um, it's of course easiest taking it daily as a supplement, but just ensure that there are between 107 and 1010 probiotic cells per gram. And usually people take it for at least four to eight weeks. And then if there's not much of a difference, they might try a different one or speak to a nutritionist. And they are best taken on an empty stomach. So first thing in the morning or last thing at night so that it can work all the goodness on your gut. So if you currently have any stomach or gut problems, any negative lifestyle factors, skin irritations, food intolerances, that you just can't seem to get rid of, difficulty shifting weight, then a probiotic supplement may be something to consider. I hope that's been really helpful for you. Thank you so much for listening and please do subscribe and follow to Life of Dr. Candy for more tidbits and you know useful information on little things we can do to change our life for the better.